we are ready to review at a couple of round tables yesterday's message. Hey, Dustin, hand me that sign real quick while we're getting that. So uh, we warned you. I like Pastor Dylan gave me that just a minute ago. We warned you last week that you were going to want to bring someone with you. You weren't just going to, thanks, bro. We weren't just going to want to show up. But then also this, this is going up on our sign right now. I'm going to push, promote, press, almost be offensive with this amendment for the next couple of weeks. Early voting, I believe, is this week. It has already begun, already taking place. I just heard on that. And yeah. then um, I thought I saw for Louisiana is October 20th through 27th, if I'm not mistaken. If I if I am mistaken, Miss Christy Faulkner or somebody that knows better than me in those areas, please post and comment and let us know when they are. But the election is no doubt November 3rd. So you can go to love lifevoteyes.com you can print out materials you can post materials it is extremely important that the church the church not just this church but the church goes and protects the right of children period unborn and born children in the state of Louisiana this is in an explanation quickly as a side note because my video is messing up this morning this is an amendment to the Constitution of the state of Louisiana. This is, this is not a legal, it doesn't need any exemptions or exceptions written in. It's not a legal document coming out of the legislature. This is not a law. This is an amendment to the Constitution where a judge, a jury, God forbid, um, or, or a court uh, cannot pass legislation or make decisions that would protect the rights of abortion or attribute tax dollars to abortions this is what it's supposed to do in the state of louisiana so that is amendment one vote number one vote yes november 3rd or in the early voting now yesterday's message we warned you we want to bring somebody with you um god bless you <laughs> that's your watch yeah <laughs> my watch found something on the web through siri um, yesterday's message, firm or flammable, is my foundation firm or flammable? I did a little bit of a review from week, week one, week two. Let's dive in before I take up any more early time. What stood out? You listened to it four times. Let's hear it. Yeah, I, I just think the right off the bat, where are you going to go? So, no. <laughs> um, I, I love the first the first question you asked, and, and especially during, during the series and within these sermons, we're all asking questions. And I, and I love the way that we set up our points yesterday were just like asking the question and then answering them with scripture. And, and, and again, the, the first question was, where am I investing my effort? If this is the last day, if this is the last season that we're experiencing and, and all the different things that we're going through as, as a nation, uh, you know, where am I investing my efforts, my time, my talent, my treasure, my energy, where am I investing that, and, and what am I doing to reach the kingdom of God? So I, I just love how you opened it up, you recapped last week's sermon, and then really started asking the, the important questions. Yeah, I think we're getting to the crux of, it's almost like we've been asking the question, okay, this is the season, so now what? Sure. And it was, so now what is, do everything you can to use your time wisely, your talent wisely, your, your finances wisely, to make sure that we don't go to heaven alone. I like how you started back off with, with talking about what Peter said and one will be left and, and how we said we're not okay with that and how we said that you know, when we get to the great white throne judgment, all these things in the timeline at the end, and we see those that God put in our path. And if you weren't here, we had the chairs in the way as people walked in, you had to walk around them. Mm -hmm. And those represented people that were in our path that week that we were just too busy for, or we, we purposely avoided or walked around or, and, and I never want to get to the end and see people that I could have reached, but because I was too concerned with other things, that's just waking up and thinking about that every single day and letting that guide your life. I thought was a I'm, transformation. I'm mm -hmm. quoting, don't go to heaven alone right now in the comments. Yeah. I don't think I've said that. And I will say it next week. Mm -hmm. I like, I like that very much. Week one, the purpose of Jesus' answer was one will be left. 
Okay, just to hone in because of a lot of a message. That was week one. Matthew 24, Luke 21. It's about the one that will be left if the church doesn't do what it's called to do. If the, if the church doesn't appropriately invest resource. If the church doesn't obediently invest time, talent, and treasure. And then Peter, one of the disciples standing there, probably one of the ones that asked the question, mm. um, certainly was likely that he verbalized something that he should or shouldn't have at that point because that was just kind of his personality, no offense. But um, in that moment, Peter reiterates in his last letter, uh, Sorry, that's <laughs> in his last letter, God is waiting. What is he waiting? He's not right. just waiting on the world to repent. He's waiting on the church to lead the world in repentance. Right. And so the idea, like the theme of Scripture, judgment starts in the house of God. I have always looked at specifically 2 Peter 3, 9 as he's being patient for the sake of the world. He's being patient for the sake of people who are lost. But he's being patient. Peter is writing to a, a group full of believers. He's being patient for your sake right? so that you can reach the people that you love and not go to heaven alone because that's what this thing is all about. It's reaching people for the sake of the kingdom. That's why he gives us resource. Mm -hmm. Let's dig a little deeper since it's round table. I believe that specifically Americans, we are going to be held to a very high accountability sure. for all the resource that we waste. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because unlike any other nation, we have freedom and we have resource that Asia doesn't have, India doesn't have, and Africa doesn't have. And we predominantly, now that I'm, again, nothing wrong with spending money on ourselves and doing things nice for our family and, and having nice homes and vehicles, unless we're doing that at the expense of the kingdom. Right. Instead of in addition to the kingdom. Right. So the kingdom is first, and then we can have nice things. But the truth is, most people spend more money on cable television than they do on sending missionaries to the parts of the earth, parts of the earth that they're not going to. Mm -hmm. The truth is, most people get too busy and they stop serving at church. The truth is, most people never accomplish the ministry that God has for their lives because they're too busy with their own individual missions. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't give at church because they bought too much of a vehicle or built too big of a house. That's what happens in America, and that's just the truth of the round table that we can dig a little bit deeper into instead of on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and I, I like the way that you phrase it yesterday. We, we go through our lives, we live our lives, we do our thing, and then sprinkle Jesus on top and call it Christianity and even what you were talking about. Many times we give to missionaries, we give to church, we do all those things out of our surplus, mm -hmm. Instead of giving out of the first and then doing things for our families and all that stuff and doing the excess American things out of the surplus, yeah. we have it flipped. And so when we look at the New Testament and it talks about, and they came together, sold everything they have, lived in one accord, shared everything. Not everybody's called to that level of uh, radicalness. I, would, I don't even know exactly how to phrase that. But their idea of the church, God's kingdom, the work that had to be done in their community to see people saved through Jesus Christ came first, yeah. and even their basic necessities came after that. Th that is the, the premise with which we should live our lives. And talking about Peter, just a plug, uh, if you look on our Facebook page, which you may be watching live on right now, if you're watching live on YouTube, you can go to our Facebook page, and uh, we posted our Bible reading for the week through Version, and it's called Peter, a Leader Made not born and it talks about where Peter was things that Jesus taught Peter in the context of large groups in the context of the 12 and then in the context of the three of him James and John and how all of those things you can see them play out in Peter after his baptism in the spirit and standing up and preaching and teaching and how so many times we're intimidated about how to fill a seat how to talk to somebody in Walmart how to do those things but if he can use Peter and you look at Peter's life and where God brought him to and from, then you can see, oh, well, God can use me too. Jesus can use me right where I'm at. And so go ahead, read that, check that out. It says it's for men.
but nothing in it is just for men. It okay, all pertains you, you to post everybody. That, post that in the comments, and we've posted that to our Facebook page as well. I, I think I heard somebody say this. Maybe I made it up. Let's just say I made it up. <laughs> um, God can't use your comfort. Hmm. He can't do anything with that. If, if you're not going to get outside of your comfort zone and give God a chance. We train and we prepare and we practice for so many things. We were talking about this in our parenting group last week. All these things that we read and we study and we learn. If somebody offers you $100,000, six-figure salary, to come and do something specific at their company, I've heard people that have no clue what they're doing, and they're probably not even telling the truth, but they say in response to that, well, I don't know, but I can learn, yeah. right? But if somebody's offering you six souls, you can't get uncomfortable. Well, If six figures were in, but six souls for the sake of the kingdom, all of a sudden when it comes to learning how to share our faith, when it comes to being uncomfortable in public, when it comes to praying, well, I don't know how to do that. We, all of us, we lose our ability to learn in regards to spiritual things, in regards to biblical principles, in regards to God's word, in regards to sharing our faith. All of a sudden, we don't trust the Holy Spirit anymore. Hmm. And, or, or we're not willing to apply this principle in that area that we are willing to apply in every other area, which is trial and error. Right. Hey, I'm human. Man, I messed that up. <laughs> I remember the first time I tried to share my faith with somebody. You know, let's tell those stories. Right. Like anybody can yeah. be successful all the time. When did the church become afraid to fail? Yeah. Like let's try some stuff. And and the Lord will let you fail. He won't let you fall, but he will let you fail. Yeah. Because he will let you learn the lesson. And anybody can be successful well, but can you fail? And learn the lesson and then come back to Uversion. A great example. You mentioned Uversion. Uversion app, I believe it has a billion downloads, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. The most popular app, specifically, obviously in regards to scripture, mm -hmm. it was a failed website. Mm -hmm. The same people, they've uh, in, they invested time, they invested invested talent and treasure, thousands of dollars probably thousands of hours of men and women coming together and brainstorming. They developed a website and it failed. All right, what did we learn? Somebody said, let's try an app. So they developed an app. And now the YouVersion Bible app, the most popular way to read the Bible in the world today is because of a failure of something that somebody learned from a lesson. Verse 14 of 2 Peter chapter 3, make every effort. Make every effort. Every effort. Effort doesn't necessarily mean a, a soul won, but it shows your obedience. It, it shows you're willing to step out. And I, I not, This is not throwing you under the bus, but I remember when I was with you, I believe God laid somebody on your heart to pray with or pray for. And uh, it, was a, it was a small child. And I believe you, you're very respectful and said, hey, can I, can I pray with your daughter? And uh, the mom said no. <laughs> it was like no, not and that, but but here's the thing, to me that wasn't a that wasn't a failure. That was all right, God. I was simply being obedient. I feel like you just made me look really good in front of you. You did. Like, I, like, I, I was, don't feel like you ran no, me over no. at all. I feel like you just lifted I me just, up because I, I, I don't even remember what you're talking about. <laughs> in, in my eyes, it, it was an effort. Like like all right, God, I'm going to be obedient in this moment. And so many times that that's what God's looking for. Someone just to say yes. Someone to be obedient, someone to make an initial effort, and we'll never know the results if we're not willing to make the effort in the investment that God's called us to live out and to pour into other people's lives. So, yeah, a seed sowed is a seed sowed. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord says, the word says, that his word never returns void. And yeah. so you speak the truth of God, the life uh, of the word into somebody's life. And it doesn't matter if you see that reward or not. Um, I believe in, I forget where in scripture it talks about that the sower and the reaper, one's not greater than the other because right. one had to sow and one had to harvest, but that they needed each other, but the glory is God's anyway. Yeah. And and I share this when we go to, for our SGM students, we go to, to Mardi Gras um, and do outreach and stuff in New Orleans. And I think I've shared it on Roundtable before, but 
we always give the depiction of everybody's got a certain number of locks on their life, on their heart. Mm. And you may be the first lock unlocked with your words. That's good. You may be the last. You may be somewhere in between. But mm. each one has to be unlocked before you can get to that last one and that door opens. And so just if you, if you, if you put it out there, if you minister, minister to somebody, if you share God's word, uh, whatever it may be, you invite somebody to church. It could be as simple as that. That's a lock unlocked. That's a seed planted. And yep. it's all just as important. It's an effort. Making sure that you understand you don't have to do this alone. Yeah. The enemy yeah. likes for you to think that you're isolated. Mm -hmm. But he knows that's because throughout Scripture, you will be my people and I will be your God. And so God wants us to connect. He wants us to do this thing together. He wants us to do it in large group settings. He wants us to do it in small group settings. He, he wants you to have a place that you can bring your friend for a great service that you probably couldn't produce at a smaller level. But then he also wants you to be able to invite your friend to a table around people that they would have come, yeah. that they would, uh, apart from the service that they wouldn't have never come to because they have an idea of what that service or that church or that place would have been like. So you don't have to do that alone were you referencing is that the context of some plant and some water but god will bring but the harvest belongs yeah, to the lord that's right. okay some will plant and some will water but but god will bring the harvest and the harvest is his but the planting and the watering is ours and just as a reminder because i was so proud of it when i first said it in the middle of a sermon um the the scripture says the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few but in the united states that's just not true for that day, it was very true. Today, the statement should be for the U.S., specifically in regards to resource, which is why I think we're going to give such a great account for what we do and do not do. The, the harvest is plentiful still, certainly in the United States of America, but the laborers are distracted. Mm -hmm. we, we are just as emotional, just as responsive, and just as overwhelmed by minuscule and temporary things in life, we're spending our resources in the same places, and, and ultimately we're spending our wills instead of spending them wisely. And we're going to give an account to Jesus for that, I do believe. I, I just love the fact that you asked the question, um, really, really getting into, are we just really just, you know, I guess playing, going through the motions? Are, are we just, you know, spinning our wills? Are we spending time wisely? I love the fact that we got down to really what, what Paul was writing to the Romans right there. Like, hey, he, he, he died and rose again for, for a purpose, for a plan. Like, we're not just doing this aimlessly, but we, we do have a purpose. We do have, there's longevity to the game. And, and so ultimately, and, and of course, I, I love that the fact that you, you showed us all this timeline of, of what's going to happen. Because, of course, people do ask those questions. Which and, is, by the way, on EuniceChurch.com yes. slash notes. And I will probably go over again this week because I know that I sped taught that yesterday <laughs> just to try to prove the point. But, but ultimately, we're asking the question, where are we spending our time? Where are we spending our efforts? Where are we going with this? Are, are, are we ministering the gospel Remember, we will give an account. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess right there in Romans chapter 14. Uh, so, so how are we doing that? What are we doing to, to spend our time in the right direction? Yeah, um, going to the last point, my foundation, Firm Reclaimable, talking about the precious stones <clears throat> reminds me of, of when you brought up Lucifer and how in him was built into him like, the heart of him were these 12 precious stones that reflected and radiated God's glory. And then how the priests had to wear that on a garment around their neck to, to radiate God's glory. But then how we can be baptized in the Spirit and have the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that are inside of us to radiate God's glory yep. and, to, and to shine those around us. And so uh, if you look through Scripture, and this is kind of a longer teaching discussion, what have you, um, but when Jesus is called the great high priest, he's the one that, that goes to the Father on behalf of us, but that we have some of those things and where we can, it's not just on the priest to radiate God's love, but it's inside of each and every single one of us. And that's where when you realize like, hey, we had what, 500 people here yesterday? A little over 500 people here yesterday? Y'all count, sounds good. Yeah, a little over, imagine if all 500 of us 
went this week, woke up every single day, and thought, how can I impact someone's eternity today? What would church next week look like? And the week yeah. after that, and everyone, single one after that, um, to a hurting community, to a hurting world. Uh, it's just that whole different mindset that like, okay, I don't have to come to church and rely on the church to, to minister to my family. To, to minister to my coworker, mm -hmm. yeah, you can invite them to church, and we'll do everything we can to show them as much uh, of the character of God as we can. But it's inside of you, and if you just let Jesus, if you let God unlock that inside of you, then that's a whole new ball game. Yeah, yeah. And that's Ezekiel twenty-eight thirteen. I looked it up. I, th I was hoping I was referencing it right yesterday, it, but Ezekiel prophecy to the king of Tyre, and then around verse thirteen, it says, "You were in Eden." And, and the devil and Adam and the woman were in Eden. So now we're talking to not just the king of Tyre, but the spirit hmm. that is possessing the king of Tyre, which was Lucifer himself. You were in Eden. You were adorned with every precious stone. So that's Ezekiel 28. Yeah. And then Paul comes back and says, hey, this is the foundation that you're, everything that Lucifer fell in, God anointed man to succeed in. Mm -hmm. Every single area, God did that throughout Scripture. And so every precious stone is now not just the reception of God's glory, but the reflection of God's glory. And again, man, what a, it's, an, it's almost annoying that, like, really? The church in America doesn't understand this. Like, we truly give ourselves credit for going living just like everybody else predominantly, even if we're not living in sin. I'm yeah. talking about living as far as, like, what we... Our, our vision, our mission, our objective for the day is to be successful, not according to biblical standards, but according to cultural standards. And that's what we do every day. And so no wonder we have so many people that don't understand their purpose or why they're alive because they're not fulfilling their purpose. Mm -hmm. Because their purpose in their mind is earthly yeah. instead of eternal. Whereas if we can make that turn, and I believe we're making it, I believe we see... That's what COVID-19 did to the church, to me, mm -hmm. more than anything else, is it said, oh, you're going to give yourself credit for just going to a service every week, and you're going to call that Christianity? Well, know. how about I just let the enemy take that away? Yeah. Yeah. And then you won't give yourself credit so much credit for just gathering in large groups or having Christian social clubs. Now you're going to actually, and, and it could be, Maybe there's a little bit of a breath. Maybe that was a prophetic warning. Maybe that was an experiential warning. And now there's a little bit of a breath and we get to return or go back to normal or whatever it is that, that everybody wants to do. But I'm telling you, man, I just sense it that there is a shift taking place in the kingdom right now, specifically in the American church where people are going to be required to actually live what we read in the New Testament, not just go about their lives, live every day or live every week, show up on Sunday, sprinkle in a little Jesus and call it, call it Christianity or call it following Jesus or call it discipleship. Any final thoughts, firm or flammable? Anything that we skipped over? My thought on, on the foundation portion of it, uh, what am I building my foundation with? Uh, so many times when we read that, I see that, like, God, you know, absolutely, I, I want those those precious stones, those precious metals, uh, like, that you are giving in order to, like, I can reflect that, like, reflect what you have bestowed upon me. But so many times I, I feel like we as a church, we as Christians, we become selfish. We want to hone that just for ourselves and, and say, hey, I'm saved, you know, I'm making it to heaven. And, and like the spiritual path. Dude, that was back. all my songs, man. Yeah. When oh, yeah. we all get to heaven. Well, we, we look forward to the day. Yeah. What I mean, about the people that aren't going? Like, <laughs> why don't we sing about why don't we sing about people that aren't saved? Yeah. Well, that's not written into any of the songs. It's it's, it's so true and it's and it's so sad. What worship song is that? Help me. <laughs> Find one worship I mean, song. The first one that comes to mind. It's <laughs> just about but it's more singing about the love of God. Love. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and then the church is fighting over that one. So yeah. mm. that's a great example God, of help us. how we help us. totally miss the purpose yeah. of God setting us free from our yeah. sin. But I, final thoughts? I, I interrupted I, you. No, I was just, just finishing the thought is are we being selfless with what God gives? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we being outward? And I love your, your illustration with the, the high priest, the priest, the, what the, the precious jewels on his chest. Literally, they... They were reflecting out. Are you reflecting 
what God has put in you and what he wants to use through you. Yeah, and uh, and two things. The first being, you know, we talk about, and you just like to hear him quote Ezekiel, and we talk about some of these kind of obscure things in Scripture. That's why I encourage you, don't skip over those, like, the book of Nahum, the book of Habakkuk, all this yeah. stuff. Like, they're such powerful truths. And I've noticed this in my relationship with God, that, you know, it, it, Scripture says to seek God and you will find Him. He's not hiding anything from you, mm. but sometimes He puts things in maybe some obscure places, like in Scripture, for you to have to seek it out and to dig for it and to learn about it and apply yourself. And and I used to sit and listen to things like this and be like, man, how do they know so much? But I was like, I'd read the Gospels and then reread the Gospels and then reread the Gospels. And like, I was not here? reading any of the rest of Scripture, but all of Scripture is there for a reason. So just encourage you to dive in into that and, and look into that. And ask questions. Yeah. Like I had someone talking on the phone this morning, like reading through Revelation, and they're asking questions because they want yeah. they want to know. Yeah, but we've been taught don't don't question God. Mm. Well, and to a sense that's true. Like, but there's a difference between my child questioning me and my child asking me a question. I put this quote. Somebody sent this to me yesterday. Oswald Chambers. I just commented. God will never reveal more truth about Himself, and I think that's what it means to seek the Lord, and you will find Him when that should say if if you seek Him with all of your heart. Very few people seek him with all of their heart like right. they try jesus like he's a pair of pants at a store that if you don't like you just Someone throw them back Jesus. on the rack so that's not who he is but seeking him and finding him oswald chambers said god will never reveal more truth about himself until you have obeyed what you already know so getting in his word and learning to surrender and be obedient is as important hey go vote Read the devotional this week. Go to your small groups. Get ready with us. We've got one more message in this series as we answer the question, is this the end? We hope to see you, and we pray you have a great week.